Hi and welcome, I'm Julianne Cost. You may have noticed that over the past few releases of Lightroom Classic, a new warning icon was added in the Develop module called the AI Status icon. This was added because several of the new features that use AI work best if they're applied in a specific order. If they're not applied in this order, we will most likely need to spend time updating our edits and have AI re-render the results. Here's a current list of the AI-assisted features and the order in which they should be applied. First, you'll want to apply denoise, or if you're applying raw details or super resolution, they should be applied first. Then the distraction removal for reflections, then people, then dust, then the remove tool, including any of the different modes, the clone, the heal, and the remove, then lens blur, and then AI masking, including select subject, sky, background, people, landscapes, and objects. So first, let's take a look at what will happen if these edits are not applied in this order. In this image, I want to remove the distracting string that's propping up the scarecrow. I'll use the Remove tool and choose the Remove mode and enable Generative AI, and then drag over this area. When I choose Remove, Lightroom is going to replace that area with new generated content that matches the amount of noise in the image at this current point in time. So now let's go to the Edit stack, and I'll apply Denoise. Lightroom uses AI to remove the noise in the image, and it looks good everywhere except for where I had previously applied the Remove tool. And that's because the Remove tool created its content to match the amount of noise that was in the image at the time that I applied it. So to draw our attention to the fact that I've made my edits out of the recommended order, the AI Edit Status icon becomes highlighted in yellow. I can then click the icon and choose to update, and Lightroom will recalculate the remove spot based on the current level of denoise that's been applied. And here's a second quick example of when edits might need to be updated. In this image, I'll add an AI-assisted background mask, and I'll decrease the exposure. Then I'll select the Remove tool, and use the Remove option with Generative AI to paint over this portion of the can to remove it. But when I choose Remove, we can see that there's a mismatch because when I had Lightroom create the AI-assisted background mask, it didn't select this area because at the time it saw this area as being part of the can. Now to fix it, I'll just return to the AI status icon and choose to update the settings. But we can see that updating settings takes time. So in this third example, let's walk through the recommended order to make AI edits so that we can avoid having to update our AI settings. First, if the photograph was taken in low light with a camera set to a high ISO, I would choose the detail panel and apply Lightroom's AI denoise to reduce the amount of noise in the image. Or if I wanted to apply raw details or super resolution instead of denoise, this would be the time to do it. Then I would move to the Remove tool, and under Distraction Removal, I would start by removing the reflections. I'll choose Apply, and that will remove the reflection. Then if there were distracting people, I would apply that, but there were no distractions found. Then I would move to Dust so that Lightroom could identify and automatically remove any dust spots caused by dust on my sensor or on the lens. Next, I'll remove any distracting elements manually. I'll begin by selecting the Heal mode and work my way around the image, just removing any small pieces of grass and the hair or anything else that I might find distracting. I want to point out that it doesn't matter which mode we select, the Clone, the Heal, or Remove, all of the manual distraction removal should be done at this point before we move on and apply lens blur or AI masking. Then I'll choose the remove mode and I'll enable generative AI for this larger area. Go ahead and just paint over the piece of lettuce. And when finished, I'll click to remove it. We can click through the three variations that Lightroom created or click generate to create three different options and then select the one that we like best. Okay, next, if I want to apply Lens Blur, 
I'll return to the Edit Stack and select the Lens Blur panel and apply it. We can see that it's added a bit of blur in the foreground. Now to add additional blur, I could adjust the focus range, but in this case, it may be easier just to paint in a blur. So I'll use the refinement area and select the blur brush and increase the amount and then paint with a large brush in any of the areas that I want to add additional blur. Next, I'm going to select the Crop tool and crop in on the image, as well as rotate it. Now, I typically crop before I make global edits because I want to reference the histogram as I make changes, and I only want it to represent the part of the photo that I'm eventually going to use. Then I'll make my global adjustments. And here we can just start in the basic panel and I'll increase the temperature to add some warmth. And then I'll increase the tint to remove the green. I'll also increase my shadows and add a bit of texture. I still see a bit too much yellow in the face. So I'll choose color mixer and decrease the saturation of the yellow color range. Now, I realize that waiting to make global edits this late in the workflow, especially doing them after removing the distracting elements, might not be what you're used to. And in fact, you can certainly do them earlier because they're not AI edits, so they won't trigger the AI update icon, but I'll leave that up to how you want to work. Okay, after making my global edits, I'll move to the masking panel to make my local adjustments. For this image, I'll choose objects and use the rectangle tool to drag a selection over the eye and add some warmth. Then I'll click add and choose object. And then I'll add the other eye. Now I realize I could use the paintbrush tool and just paint over these areas, but I wanted to include an AI assisted mask in this example. I'll add one more mask, this time just the brush tool and paint around the edges to darken down the brighter areas. Excellent, so now you know, when these AI assisted tools are not applied in the recommended order, you will most likely need to use the AI status icon to update the AI settings. Often the updates are quick, but with more complex images, or when batch processing large volumes of images, updating the settings might take longer. And after updating, be sure to double check any of your remove spots just to make sure that the results are what you intended. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.